Hey everyone, it's Miss Kinder again. I'm back. Sign of the Beaver. Gonna keep rolling. I don't know if anybody's watching these videos, but I'm not gonna give up that determination and resilience. And I'm gonna finish this book for you guys. Um, we're on chapter 15 today. And when we left off, oh my gosh, something very exciting is about to happen. So I hope you're watching this so you can figure out, find out, I guess, what happens with 18 and Matt. Um, when we left off yesterday, Matt and Atien had realized how they have sort of similar mythologies in the way that they believe that the world was created and shaped. Um, there was a parallel between the story of Noah that Matt shared and um, Atien told a similar story, very similar um, myth that his people uh, tell on a regular basis about Gluskabe. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. But so over and over again, Matt and Atien are realizing that even though they're very different in a lot of ways, they have a lot of similarities too. All right, chapter 15, Sign of the Beaver by Elizabeth George Spear. On the day of their greatest adventure, Atien had come without his dog, so there was no warning. Hmm, a little foreshadowing there. Getting an idea something's about to happen. Matt was in fine spirits that day because he had managed by a magnificent stroke of luck to hit a rabbit with his bow and arrow. It was the first time this had happened and it was more the rabbit's doing than his own. The silly creature had just sat there and let him take careful aim. All the same, he was pleased with himself and even more pleased that Atien had been there to see it. So he's, again, still trying to gain Atien's respect and he's hoping maybe capturing this rabbit he's done so. When the boys decided to visit, visit the beaver dam again, Matt was unwilling to leave the rabbit behind in case some thieving animal should discover it. He was walking behind Atien, swinging the rabbit carelessly by the ears, as Atien always did when the Indian suddenly halted, his whole body tensed. Matt could see nothing unusual, and he had opened his mouth to speak, and Atien silenced him with a jerk of his hand. Then he heard a sound in the underbrush ahead. Not a rustle, like a grouse or a snake. Not a trapped animal. This was a stirring of something moving slowly and heavily. He felt a cold prickle in his stomach. He stood beside Atien, his own muscles tight, scarcely breathing. A low bush bent sideways through the leaves. A brown head thrust itself, bigger than that of a dog and shaggier. It was a small bear cub. Matt could see the little eyes peering at them curiously, the brown nose wrinkling at the strange smell of human boy. The little animal looked so comical that Matt almost laughed out loud. Sssst, Atien warned under his breath. There was a crashing of bush and a low snarling growl. An immense paw reached through the thicket and tumbled the cub over and out of sight. In its place loomed a large, huge, brown shape. Bursting through the leaves was a head three times as big as the cubs. No curiosity in those small eyes, only an angry reddish gleam. Somehow, Matt had the sense not to run. He stood frozen on the path. A bear could overtake a running man in a few bounds, and this was only two bounds away. The bear's head moved slowly from side to side. Its heavy body brushed aside the branches as though they were cobwebs. It swayed, shifting its weight from one foot to the other. Slowly it rose on its hind legs. Matt could see the wicked curving claws. Matt would never know why he acted as he did. He could not remember thinking at all, only staring with numb horror as the creature was about to charge. Somehow he did move. He swung the dead rabbit by its ears and hurled it straight at the bear's head. The tiny body struck the bear squarely on its nose. With a jerk of her head, the bear shook it off as though it were a buzzing mosquito. The rabbit flopped useless to the ground. The bear did not even bother to look down at it. She had been distracted for only an instant, but in that instant, something flashed through the air. There was a sharp twing and the dull thud of a blow. Just between the eyes of the bear, the shaft of Atien's arrow quivered. As the waving four paws began to lower, a second arrow struck just below the bear's shoulder. The great head shuddered and sank toward the ground. With a wild yell, Atien sprang forward and thrust his knife deep just behind the first arrow. Still, 
Scarcely aware that he moved at all, Matt le leaped after him, jerking his own knife from his belt. He sank it into the brown fur. His blow had been misplaced, but it was not needed. The bear's sides were heaving. The boy stood watching, and in a few moments, it lay still. Matt stared down at the creature in horror. The fearsome yellow teeth were still bared in a snarl. Saliva and blood dribbled down from its open jaws. The little eyes that had glinted so savagely were filmed over. The long, sharp claws hung powerless, clotted with pawed up earth. Now that there was nothing to fear, Matt felt his knees shaking. He hoped that ATM would not notice and he managed a wide grin to hide his trembling, but ATM did not grin back. He stood over the bear and began to speak slowly, solemnly in his own tongue. He spoke for some time. What were you saying, Matt demanded, when the speaking was over. I tell bear I do not want to kill, Atian answered. Indian not kill she bear with cub. I tell bear we did not come here to hunt. But it might have killed us both. Maybe. I ask bear to forgive that I must kill. Well, I'm mighty thankful you did, Matt said stoutly. He was about to say that he had never been so scared in his life, but he thought better of it. Atien looked at him and his solemnness suddenly dissolved in a grin. You move quick, he said, like Indian. Maybe Matt's finally earned a little respect from Atien. Matt felt his cheeks turn red. You killed him, he said honestly. Yet he knew that he had played a part. He had given Atien just that instant in which to notch his arrow. Atien nudged the bear with his toe. Small, he said, just some fat. Good for eat. Small? Monstrous creature? It certainly was too big for two boys to carry. It appeared that Atien had no intention of trying. Belong squaw now, he said. I go tell. Now you remember we discussed when we started reading this book that the author uses that word squaw as if it refers to women, just the word woman, but we know now that that's a derogatory term. So when we read that, we should be aware that the author wasn't, didn't make a good word choice there when she used the word squaw. You mean a squaw's gonna carry that heavy thing? Cut up meat, then carry, squaw work, Atien answered. It was plain that he had done the man's work and was finished with it. The cub, Matt remembered now, it was nowhere in sight. Atien shook his head. Let cub go, he said. When Sigwan come again, him plenty big to eat. Take rabbit, Atien reminded him. Matt looked with distaste at the rabbit, almost covered by the bear's heavy paw, the fur matted and bloody. He would rather not have touched it, but obediently, he pulled it out. It was his dinner, after all, and he knew that in Atien's world, everything that was killed must be used. The Indians did not kill for sport. When Atien had disappeared into the forest, Matt still stood looking down at the first bear he had ever seen. He felt resentful. Atien had killed the bear, of course. It was his by right. But Matt would have liked just a small share of that meat, or even one of those big claws to show his father. Then he remembered the Indian boy's tribute. He had moved fast like an Indian. That would have to be share enough. Right, so that's the end of that chapter, and it looks like Matt's finally gained a little bit of um, Atien's respect by helping him to kill the bear, but he's uh, feeling a little bit jealous because, quite honestly, he would like to taste that bear. He's never killed one before. He's never tasted one before, and uh, instead, Atien's going to have some of the villagers bring it back to their village and cook it, and Matt's just going to have to sell for his dinky little rabbit. All right, so we'll find out what happens next tomorrow when I do another video, but I hope you guys are staying safe and you're healthy and that you're keeping up with as much as you can to keep your skills sharp so when I see you again soon, I can tell that you're just as smart as you were, not more so than when we left school. Okay, Miss Kinder loves you. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.